Why, hello and welcome to another Faith, Philosophy and Life with me, Mr Shelton. I do hope that you are doing really well. Um, a little bit more complicated this one today, probably quite close to home for some of us, because we're going to be thinking about fairness with the guise of bullying. Um, and hopefully what we're going to do today is to, to make us think through some of the issues that may be presented um, with this particular topic and how it relates to RE rather than PSE. Obviously there is a massive overlap between the two but before we do that I've got a little film clip to show you. There's a trailer for a film called Mean Girls with Lindsay Lohan. I just wonder if any of this rings any bells and maybe not quite in the same American way that we'd see it but maybe there's groups of pupils in the school that we would put into similar brackets. So let's just watch this now and see does this speak to us at all? We have a new student with us. She just moved here from Africa. Welcome. I'm from Michigan. Great. I'm 16, but until today, I was homeschooled. And then it was goodbye, Africa. And hello, high school. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Janice. This is Damien. Watch out, new meat coming through. This map shows the school's central nervous system, the cafeteria. You got your cool Asians, burnouts, jocks, the greatest people you will ever meet, and the worst. So you've never been to a real school before? Shut up. Shut up! I didn't say anything. Plastics. Who are the plastics? They're teen royalty. That's Karen Smith. She is one of the dumbest girls you will ever meet. I'm kind of psychic. Really? It's like I have ESPN or something. Gretchen Wieners. She has two Fendi purses and a silver Lexus. And evil takes a human form in Regina George. She knows everything about everyone. That's why her hair is so big. It's full of secrets. We want to invite you to have lunch with us. Regina seems sweet. Get in, loser. We're going shopping. Your house is really nice. I know, right? Being with the plastics was like leaving the actual world. <laughs> And entering girl world. Have you seen any guys that you think are cute yet? There's this guy in my calculus class. His name's Aaron Samuels. <gasps> no, no. That's Regina's ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriends are off limits. I mean, that's just like the rules of feminism. <laughs> Gretchen told me that you like Aaron Samuels. I could talk to him for you if you want. Really? You would do that? I don't want it. You're so hot. <gasps> Why would she do that? She's a life ruiner. I knew how this would be settled in the animal world. <laughs> But this was girl world. All the fighting had to be sneaky. I want to lose three pounds. There are these nutrition bars my mom uses to lose weight. <laughs> it won't close. It's a five. You could try Sears. Uh -uh. Why are you eating a Caltein bar? What? They make you gain weight like crazy. <laughs> Who does she think she is? I like invented her. <laughs> I'm sorry I laughed at you. <gasps> I'm sorry I called you fat. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm popular. Walk it off! Walk it off! Okay. You know who's looking fine tonight? Seth Mosikowski. He is your cousin. What? He's a good kisser. And from one movie trailer to another, here's our cheesy intro sequence. <laughs> So our title today is What Impact Does Bullying Have? What Impact Does Bullying Have? Uh, as always, you will need to pause me as we go and you'll need to make sure that you photograph any work and send it through to your teachers if they would like to because we generally do want to know what you're getting up to. Our learning objective is to explore the different faces of bullying and how Christians may respond to the issue. 
It's going to be a good outcome if you can describe the roles of the victim, the bully and the bystander. It's going to be great if you can explain how a bystander can influence the actions of a bully. And even better if you can consider why someone may make wrong actions and what a good response could be to those incorrect choices. And we've just got over my shoulder there our Christian value of justice. Obviously that flows through this whole thing of fairness that we're doing at the moment. And we're gonna look at some visual sources and I'm gonna be asking you to interpret some information and to do a little bit of reflection as well. So, <laughs> so we've got uh, some keywords that we're gonna think about in terms of victim, boy, boy, boy standard, bystander and bully. We're gonna think about um, the true cost. I've got some research there, but I think we'll do a little bit of reflection instead actually on balance. So let's just start with this. Okay, we've got three key terms, a victim, a bully and a bystander. Let's just see if you can define in your book what those three things are, the victim, the bully and the bystander. So pause me now while you get those defined. Okay, so a victim is someone who has an action uh, done to them against their own will, um, normally in a position that they would find it um, offensive or scary. A bully is someone who exerts physical presence or uh, emotional or mental presence over somebody else to show authority, generally without the consent of the other person. And a bystander is someone who stands there and just watches it happen and doesn't technically get involved. Now I'd argue that a bystander does get involved even if they're just standing there watching it happen. And we're going to think about that uh, in a short while. But first off, I love this little exercise. This is normally an exercise I suggest you do in class with discussion with each other, but obviously that's going to be a little bit harder. So maybe get your phones, get WhatsApp, FaceTime, something like that, and uh, work through these. So which of these people would you say uh, is a victim, a bully, or a bystander. Okay, there aren't necessarily any rights and wrongs with this, but I'd be interested to know what you think. So which ones would you have as the victim, as the bully, or the bystander? Okay, with that now done, um, why do you think some people get involved in conflict more than others? So you will know of some people who will always be up for maybe having a good go, have an argument, maybe getting in a fight. Whereas you'll also know some people that are just very quiet and very timid. So my question for you to answer is, why do some people get involved in conflict more than others? So pause me now while you do that. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is here we are. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at the role of the bystander. And I love this particular photograph. Um, that just actually sounded far worse than it was meant to. Um, I think this picture of the photograph does show uh, what's a typical idea with bullying, to be honest with you. There's someone being bullied. There's people, the actual bully, and there's people egging them on. And maybe people just standing there watching in the back. But I wonder... What have we actually ignored? What have we ignored in our lives? I came across this. And I think this is a really good thing to show you about how people can just generally ignore things. And does that make it right? So let's just watch this now. Plays like this street in New York City. If you were unfortunate enough to be the victim of a crime or taken ill unexpectedly, you might think that surrounded by all these people, someone would intervene. After all, isn't there safety in numbers? Psychologists say no. Research suggests that often a victim is less likely to receive assistance when surrounded by a group rather than a single bystander. When people are in a crowd, it's easier to pass the buck. It's what psychologists call the diffusion of responsibility. Liverpool Street Station in London, a busy thoroughfare for commuters. Uh, uh. Unknown to these uh, passers-by, Peter uh, is an actor. Uh, As part of an experiment on bystander uh, apathy, he's pretending uh, to be ill. Help, help. Uh, How long before he gets help? help. Please, 
Helping would be inconvenient or even risky. He lies there for more than 20 minutes and no one raises an eyebrow. Please, somebody help me. It's always very distressing to watch situations like this where people are obviously suffering and no one's actually helping them. But what we have here is two conflicting rules. One is the rule that we ought to help and the other is the rule that we ought to do what everybody else is doing. And here you have a, a group of, effectively a group of strangers who are exerting the pressure not to intervene, not to help. And it's very difficult to rebel. Ruth, another actor, takes Peter's place. How long before she receives help? Four minutes later, and 34 people have passed without stopping. Well, people don't really want to know that they just haven't got the time. Well, they have got the time, they just don't want to get involved. Unwittingly, these strangers have silently formed a temporary group with a rule, don't get involved. They're afraid to stand out from the crowd and won't take action if no one else does. This woman has clearly spotted Ruth, but she conforms to the rule and does nothing. Watch what happens, though, when someone else helps. You all right? You all right? Yes, thank you. you sure, you look a bit clicky, you know what I mean? She suddenly you finds sure. herself in a different group with a new rule to help. Uh, you want to sit up? You, you don't look well, does she? Uh, you all right? Yeah. What's wrong? First, I thought she was dead. Then I saw the check to see if she was breathing or not. And I looked around and I couldn't believe that no one had noticed her because there was a bloke sat there just absorbed in reading a newspaper. This time, Peter's dressed as a respectable gentleman. Now that his dress is in keeping with those around him, how long before he's rescued? Hello, sir. How are you today? I'm all right. Six thanks. seconds. <laughs> she even calls him <laughs> sir, and suddenly no, everyone's fine. a good Samaritan. Right. Do you suffer from epilepsy? No. Why are you lying on the floor in the rain? Because he's part of the right group. Everyone wants to help. I would just hate to be in his position of feeling ill um, and nobody helping and walking past, so I'd just like to check that he was OK. And I thought, well, it's wet, so he must really be ill because he's going to ruin his suit anyway. <laughs> so, here's a little thought for you. One day, the great philosopher Socrates came upon an acquaintance, a friend, who ran up to him excitedly and said, Socrates, do you know that I've just heard that one of your students... Oh, wait a moment, Socrates replied. Before you tell me, I'd like you to pass a little test. It's called the filter test. The filter test? That's correct, Socrates says. Before you talk to me about my student, let's take a moment to test what you're going to say. The first is the test of truth. Have you made absolutely sure that what you're going to tell me is true? No, the man replied. Actually, I just heard about it. All right, said Socrates. So you don't really know if it's true or not. Now let's do the second test. The test is goodness. Is what you're about to tell me about one of my students something good? No, on the contrary. So Socrates continued, you want me to tell me something bad about him, even though you're not even certain it's true? The man shrugged, a little embarrassed. Socrates continued, you may still pass though, because there is a third test. The test of usefulness. Is what you want to tell me about my student going to be useful for me? No, not really. Well, concluded Socrates, if what you want to tell me is neither true, nor good, nor even useful, then why tell me at all? The man was defeated and ashamed and said no more. I just think that's brilliant. If we all lived our life with that, good, useful and true, then how much more positive would the planet be? How much more positive would our society be, our friendships be, if that was the rule we lived by? So the moral of the story is this, right? Try and filter your everyday life at school. Remember to check, is it good, true, is it good, and is it useful? I'm not saying you've got to do that. I just think it's worthy of a consideration for you. So... I want to just dig a little bit deeper and give you a chance for a little bit of reflection on this. I came across this song by um, uh, an artist that on a radio station that I quite like to listen to. And um, 
it really, I, I just find it as a very moving uh, little song actually. And uh, what I'd like you to do is I'm going to play it for you. And uh, I'd like you while this is on to do a little bit of pencil doodling or reflection or writing about things that this song speaks to you, key words that jump out at you. Um, it's quite a moving song, I personally feel. You might not feel the same way. But I want you to think about what is it that this song is speaking to you about. And this is a bit of personal reflection time for you. So let's watch this and then we're going to come back to me. So we said it'd be good if we could describe the roles of the victim, bully and bystander. And again, hopefully we've got that kind of knocked on the head now. Great if you could talk about how the bystander can influence the actions of the bully. And our media clip was really good at showing that. And now we need to consider uh, why someone might make wrong actions and, and a good response to that as well. So let's think about what Christians think. OK, so Christians are, are generally against all forms of bullying. I mean, that kind of makes sense because it makes people suffer and suffering isn't obviously how God intended people to be created. Everyone, Christians believe that everyone was made in the image of God. Therefore, treating someone badly abuses God's creation. Jesus taught the golden rule, treat others as you'd like to be treated. And the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, on the, the message, John and the message of Jesus uh, is a message of love. It teaches that we should treat everyone as equals and show them the respect that they deserve as human beings. Maybe make a note of a couple of those. We, we're going to need those in a few moments. So pause me now where you get a couple of those points written down. OK, so this is our last last sort of activity for this lesson. Um, and there's been lots of things to think about this lesson. This is just a chance for you to reflect on it. And it's a big question for you to answer. Bullies deserve sympathy and not punishment. Bullies deserve sympathy and not punishment. So when you think about a bully, they quite often are a bully because they've been bullied previously in their life. If you've got a bystander watching what's happening, it encourages the bully. And maybe that's just how they crave attention. And don't get me wrong, I'm not for a second saying that it's the, you know, that that it's it's okay because it's not and the victims getting injured uh, at any point during this but there is certainly a question that says is it fair to completely blame the bully and is there anything we need to do about that so i'd like you to do a paragraph that agrees with the statement a paragraph that disagrees with the statement a paragraph of christian teaching as we've just gone through and then finally your opinion that will take the rest of the lesson i hope that something we've covered there has been helpful for you if it has raised anything that you want to do talk about then obviously do send a message to one of your teachers um, because we don't want you suffering uh, we want to help out and I know some of these topics can be quite difficult so that's the end of our fairness section um, I may have something extra to, to throw on as well um, but you'll be directed to that so thanks for your time take care stay safe wash hands God bless you I'll be seeing you soon